Any ladies and gentlemen that just come in as well, feel free to come over to the right side. So my left, towards the back end of the corner, there are some seats available. So come over to this corner over here, we'll be able to get you a seat down there. them all a big round of applause. Now, Eora was born in captivity, but he's been trained to act as an ambassador for his wild cousins. So just for one moment, imagine that you're standing in front of a stadium full of a thousand people. For a human, it can be quite a daunting experience, so no less for a pelican. So to get Eora trained to this standard is really quite a remarkable achievement. Now Paige and Eora have been working together for a number of years, and so you can see that Eora is very comfortable in Paige's presence. In fact, he does know that wherever Paige goes, it's safe for him to follow. Now his job today is simply to present himself on this box and lower his wings. The training that's being used is exactly the same as the SEAL training and that's known as positive reinforcement. Each behaviour that's done correctly is rewarded by the blow of the whistle and that fish. Now Australian pelicans are the largest of the world's seven species of pelican and they're the only ones with that lovely black and white blue hinge. He's just had a little bit of fun there with Hayley as she goes to pick up that piece of white bait. Now, that pouch that they have under their beak, and by the way, that's the largest beak of any bird in the world. Now what they do is they scoop a lot of water up into that beak. They can scoop up to 13 litres. And then in that water, they hopefully have got some crustaceans or small fish. And once they expel that water, they live with those sort of things in their beak. Now why is he acting as an ambassador for his wild cousins? Well just like seagulls, they're very opportunistic feeders. So they come into contact with humans in not such a positive way. So if you go fishing or you go for a picnic and you see one of these guys, which is not uncommon, please don't attempt to feed them. What you can do is just observe them, but certainly if you are fishing and you've got a fish on the line, try and do all you can to keep it away from these guys, because that's one of the most common reasons that we do get them to our wildlife hospital here at Taronga. So folks, how about a big round of applause for Eora and his trainers, Paige, Hayley and Johnny. Now this is my cracker. Well folks, how about you welcome our four-year-old Californian sea lion, Troy, with his trainer, Angela. sea lions like Troy are found on the west coast of North America. And there's one thing that is unique about California sea lions, and what's that Troy? <laughs> yep. Did you pick it? It's an American accent. <laughs> now the world's 33 species of seals, they all fall under the name of pinniped. And pinniped is simply a Latin word which means winged foot. <laughs> Now these winged feet, or flippers as they're more correctly known, are getting these guys around on land really well. But if you've seen our leopard seal Casey today, you would have noticed on land he's rather clumsy. That's because he belongs to a distinctly different family of seal, known as true seals. Whereas fur seals and sea lions like Troy, well they're known as eared seals. Now once again you fit in really well here folks, the louder you cheer and scream, the better Troy goes. So how about starting off with a big roar for Troy, and let's see what happens. Fantastic. Now, here he goes. He just ripped, misread his cue there. He is a young seal and he is learning. And what he's showing off here is known as porpoising. So folks, how about some encouragement for Troy porpoising? This is the way that seals take a quick breath of air and at the same time keep up that terrific speed which comes in handy for catching their prey. And at the same time, they use that method too when they're trying to escape from being eaten themselves. Now in the ocean, well it can be a dangerous place, killer whales like to take seals, but there's one other animal that's really quite dangerous to seals. And kids, do you know what it is? You can yell it out. Shark? That's a 
great impersonation that Troy is famous for. But what in fact is happening there, Troy is cooling down. On a warm day like today, sometimes the water's not enough to cool the seals down. What they do is put that hairless flipper above the water and allow the heat to escape through there. In fact, any flipper will do, as Troy's showing you. <laughs> A common question we get here at SEAL Theatre is how long does it take to train a SEAL? Well, that can... That's right, Troy. Well, that can depend on how intelligent they are, and this guy is very intelligent, and what they're learning. So Troy has learned segment one of the regular SEAL show in uh, just over six months, so he really is a dynamic young SEAL. So, folks, how's he going today? The kids give Troy a big wave goodbye. bring out one of his best mates. Now he is native to the Northern Hemisphere and Californian see with his trainer Brad. How about a welcome for the boat? That's a cute little wave. Now already you can see the differences between Ronnie and Troy. In fact that orange stuff there is his underfur and as Brad there is building on his already strong relationship with Ronnie, what he's doing is revealing two layers of fur. That outer layer is a guard hair which protects the soft stuff underneath, which keeps his skin dry and warm during winter. Whereas sea lions like Troy need to eat a little bit more and build up weight so they can stay warm during winter. Now, Troy today is working on probably the most important behaviours that we train our seals in, and it's known as husbandry. It's where we get the animal to cooperate in their daily healthcare. So it can be such things as presenting his flipper to Brad, opening his mouth on cue there, somewhat like you kids when you go to the doctors, you have to say, ah. What Brad is looking for there is what he does daily, is just make sure his oral and dental care is uh, nice and tip top, and also getting Ronnie to lie down nice and still. <laughs> Now seals are social animals, they like a lot of seals around them, but it doesn't mean that they won't take a bite out of each other. So if they do, we need to be on top of that as quick as possible. And at the same time, Brad there is just looking to make sure his body condition is fine, his coat is fine, and anything that just looks abnormal is recorded straight away and our vet clinic is contacted so that they can just have a double check as well. <laughs> and in the case of our females, what we do is let them roll over and expose their bellies. And in that way, we can practice using ultrasound and x-ray machines on them. So when it comes to the real thing, we're not stressing out the animal. We've got dummy equipment and we sort of turn it into a game for the seals. Now it makes them nice and healthy animals and in that way, we're on top of their health at all times. So guys, that was Ronnie. By the way, is a juvenile sound. Angela's just building her strong relationship with Matt. She's been working with Matt for quite a few years. He has a similar history, but he was... That's right, mate, that's a mature sound. And he was found on Maruma Beach with a very bad scar to his back. Now, he's either attacked by a shark, that's right, or hit by a boat. Now, he was brought back to our wildlife hospital. Well, usually it's our goal to try and release him back in the wild, but he was so young, he lost any hunting or social skills. But there is one common misconception that all seals do is simply just eat and sleep. So put up your hand if you're one of those people that think that seals are lazy animals. <laughs> What's well, a common misconception? You see, all day long these guys can be found on a beach simply just lying around. And of course on a sunny day working on those tan lines. But seal colonies are busy places and tensions can run high. So, it pays to keep your eye open and watch your back at all times. <laughs> and that, by the way, is a look back, and that's the way that seals check for danger on land. But you see, bigger and louder seals have come along and act up, so it's easy for the smaller ones to simply just stay out of the way. That way, it's only the strongest guys to get, that get to pass on their genes. But today, Mav's going to show you just how strong he is. But to do that, he really needs your encouragement. So help him get all the way across the way. But he is learning a new behaviour at the moment. He is quite an acrobatic guy, but as you can see, he's a little bit bulky. He's got a lot of muscle there. <laughs> and what he's going to do is try and hit that middle target. But once again, he needs your help. So I'm going to count to three, and you've got to yell, jump, map. Okay, so Amy, your camera's in the middle of the pool there. And when I count to three, let's jump, map. One, two, three. <laughs> uh, maybe that wasn't loud enough. Well, once again, one, two, three. 
Once he gets out of the water and finishes off his fish, and make sure you give him a big round of applause.